Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly, and if we just have a look at the time for one second, it is now three minutes past midnight. This is a much later recording than I am used to doing, and definitely one of the great benefits of being able to moor up and give yourself a little bit of space between any surrounding boats so I can stand here and shout at the camera at this time of night. Hopefully there's nobody with an earshot and if there are who's walking the towpath at this hour? Anyway um, moving swiftly on from that really bizarre and off-track introduction this is another episode of my random series of, well, just talking about childhood and completely random stupid stuff that I used to get up to. Maybe I've got a title slide to add in about now. And hopefully I did, or that's been a completely random bit of the video. Anyway, some of you may have tuned in recently to my video where I talked about when I'd be at my nan and granddad's house over the summer school holidays and pretend to be a cat in the garden and there'd be people walking past, stopping and trying to find this cat and then coming in and knocking on the door and all sorts of fun and games. I'll put a link in the description to that video if you're interested. Today we're going to talk about another classic childhood moment and that was my great granddad's black eyes. Now it's nowhere near as bad as that title suggests but as you can imagine being a random kid with all the time in the world on his hands over the summer holidays and all sorts of random well, not gadgets because we didn't have fancy things like that back then we had actual physical things that weren't all apps um, and I used to have, I used to be really into things like uh, spying and secret agent stuff and things like that so I had like all sorts of little miniature binoculars and goodness knows what else and I also randomly just had for some reason a book about vampires and how to be a vampire and it again that's nowhere near as dramatic or weird as it sounds as basically it was a book that told you some ridiculous uh, stories and then supplied you with some face paint one of which was white to make your pale uh, white like deathly vampire face then there was black to go around your eyes to give you those those deathly dark ringed eyes. And then, of course, the other colour had to be red. So that was your like blood dripping out of your mouth from your latest feast and so on. So that was one of the things that pairing up those two uh, to think, completely unrelated items of vampires and being a secret agent, which, I mean, what kid doesn't want to be both of those things? Or maybe the vampire thing is a little bit disturbing. But anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly on. Oh, this video is already so off track, I can only apologise. Once again, we're filming after midnight, please forgive me. So, one of the things that occurred with having all of those sort of random interests and things in the general vicinity of my nan and granddad's house over the school holidays was me one day with my general mind and love of practical jokes and magic tricks thinking hang on I can do the classic sort of boot polish on the telescope style prank here where if I put some of the black um the black face paint around the viewing parts of the binoculars then that is going to lead people to go, oh yeah, look through these binoculars. They lift the binoculars up, remove the binoculars, and wow, look at that, they've got black eyes. Hilarious. So you would think that's the sort of thing that wouldn't really go very far and didn't have much um, sort of post-prank uh, life in it, I suppose. Of course, this would not be a video that's probably going to go on for far too long of me talking at the camera if it did indeed end at the, haha, you've got black eyes, so on, oh yeah, I better wash this off. Because once upon a time, my great granddad, who used to go down to my nan and granddad's house for dinner every day, back in the good old days, and of course over the summer holidays, he was almost a, just another person to fall victim to my general antics and pranks. And I'd say again, this is probably in the ages of eight, nine, ten, that sort of like the young. I wasn't at big school yet at this point, I'm sure of that much. So that puts me at age 11 at the absolute maximum. But I would say a little bit younger than that. And again, I just like tried it out and it worked perfectly. But one of the things I realised was that I needed to sort of make sure there was good contact between the binoculars and the ice. So what I randomly did was, for, again, I was a stupid kid, so I didn't really need reasons to do stuff at that time. So I just said to me great granddad, oh, 
have a look down here. And I looked through the um, objective, like the big lenses of the binoculars, and he looked through the small lenses of the binoculars. And so I made sure that he got a proper good, decent coating of black face paint around his eyes. So that immediately was sort of like, take it away. Oh, that's brilliant. That's worked excellently. And I managed to keep a straight face and not blow the amusing event. So then in the uh, the classic childhood tradition way, this is a real lifting the curtain uh, moment here. My nan would then shout us through and my nan and granddad would already be in the dining room and yeah, we'd go in and sit down. So then there's the great sort of comedy moment of the three of us sitting around the table with my great granddad, who is then there, not realising that everybody's sort of giving each other glances and going, and sort of just having a mild sort of stifled chortle about him obviously turning up suddenly with these black eyes. And of course, my nan and granddad, excellent sports that they have always been and continue to be, uh, were there and didn't say a word to him. So it's all very funny and we all like laugh and so on. But my great granddad is still completely in the dark as to what's going on. So in this classic way that my nan and granddad have always been these excellent sports when it comes to practical jokes and giving as good as they get and so on, they then let... I mean, I want to once again. I want to just say that I'm I'm relatively innocent. I was I was a kid. The the real um, heroes of this practical joke were my nan and granddad for letting my great granddad walk back out of the house, still adorning his unknown black eyes. So he obviously then carries on and goes uptown and goes about his general daily life as if nothing. Well, as far as he's concerned, everything's just normal. But then, of course, as he's going around town and he goes to places and bumps into people that he sees, uh, bumps into people that he knows, rather, they sort of, a couple of them say random things like, oh, have you, have you had a fall? And he's like, no, no. And so obviously they leave it. And he's obviously answering these questions about, oh, has, has something happened? Not knowing what they're talking about. And when he acts like that in response to their sort of concerned questions, they obviously think, oh, we better leave it, better leave it for general politeness sake. So he carries on and does a good lap around town until when he was on his way back home, some uh, random chap that he knew finally sort of asked him the question and said oh hang hang on a minute and then reached up and literally touches me great granddad's eyes and then realizes that he's got this classic uh, uh, he's fallen afoul of the classic boot polish on the telescope trick something straight out of the beano comic and that's when he sort of realizes and i can only imagine what his reaction must have been after walking around oswald street for hours on end with well literally black eyes that he didn't realize he had in the way that these things then sort of get given an extra bit of life the story doesn't end at the actual discovery of the practical joke itself because there had obviously already been people who'd been about town and seen him and spoken to him they then went on to obviously in the way that gossip and general talk happens tell other people that they'd seen him with black eyes and so on so for weeks after he would be walking around town and bumping into random people who he hadn't seen for a while and they'd be asking oh are you okay oh i've heard this happened or that happened and of course he then had to explain to people oh no i'm fine i just had face paint on which i can't imagine would have amused him that much as time went on but again i was only an eight-year-old child or so at the time so please i'm holding my hands up and saying i was just a stupid kid don't blame me too much as i say i know my nan and granddad will be watching this video so hello there n and g um but also i i would say they were the responsible adults please i was only a child um, so as i quickly try and pass the blame off myself to anybody else who happened to be in the house um, as that sort of thing as the story of my great granddad and his black eyes carried on and so on he then even as the sort of the height of how this had spread started to have actual phone calls to his house from random people saying oh are you okay i've heard and then he would again have to explain the story of oh uh, yeah no I'm, I'm fine thanks very much for your concern and so on but yeah that dan brown don't trust him if he ever gives you anything to look at do not trust him at all <laughs> anyway on that note, again, this has been a completely random story. Hope you've enjoyed it. Completely random little insight into the young Dan Brown who used to run around like an absolute idiot doing these stupid things and had, luckily, a family who were full of good sports to at least sort of 
not necessarily wholeheartedly endorse these actions, but at least put up with them with a smile and a nod and sometimes joining in the fun too. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos. These aren't my regular sort of videos. It's normally all about boat life and the outdoors, biking, kayaking, scenery, walking, mountains, goodness knows what else. General outdoorsy fun stuff. Hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, subscribe, feel free to like the Facebook page or even add me personally on Facebook and Twitter if you want to load more random updates from Life Afloat and canal scenery pictures. And of course, if you want to know more random stories from my more recent life, check out my books available for the Kindle. Feel free to search Amazon for The Narrowboat Lad or find the links to everything just mentioned in the description below. Until the next time, keep it story worthy, keep it face paint worthy, keep it boat worthy and farewell.